last time, the question was, why Shraddha is emphasized? In that context, we were seeing the role of science because nowadays it has become a fashion or a trend to decry scriptures, including the Vedas, as something which is not sensible. Branding them as something which is unblind belief, andashraddha, the blind belief. In this context, first to begin with, we should be clear that our, our Vedic culture, our Sanatana Dharma culture, our Bharatiya culture, which is based on the Vedas, doesn't condemn either science or more precisely, material progress. Material progress is indispensable. And knowledge concerning that, whatever it may be, is described as aparavidya. It's a part of life. To live in this life, upper half is that necessary, which includes science also. We don't discard it. But Vedas tell us that it will give you temporary means to conduct yourself properly in this life, but by itself. It is incapable of making you accomplish the final goal of your life. You may know Shastras or you may not know. The final goal of everyone's life is what? To be happy forever without trace of sorrows and live forever. They may not be able to express it so, but all their deeds exhibit this. Shastra says, your method of do and achieve sadhana sadhya is incapable of accomplishing that. Because what you want to accomplish is not there in this creation at all. On the contrary, it is your swarup. Science has its limitation. Science operates, functions in the field of Perceptual knowledge, Indriya protection, whatever can be seen, hear, tasted, touched, or smell, whatever can be perceived directly or with the enhanced capacity by scientific gadgets, that is analyzed and codified, deduced. How is it all about? Try to investigate and find to some degree to find result also. But it operates 
in the field of perceptible world. There is also a branch of knowledge related to imperceptible entities. World we can't see. There is no world. Imperceptible. Sanskrit word is Atindriya. Transcenses. Transperception. Transcendental. Not terrestrial. So, where science ends, Veda begins. The knowledge, the Veda is a Paurusheya. A Paurusheya means not accessible to human intellect on its own unless pointed out. Because on our own, we can know what is perceptible and with the mind and intellect. This is not within the purview of senses, mind, and intellect. On the contrary, it is the principle which enables the senses, mind, intellect to function. So it cannot be the object of the mind, senses, and the intellect. It is said, Pratyakshen Anumityava Yastu Payana Bad Buddhate Vidantyenam Vedena Tasmad Vedasya Vidita Pratyakshen Anumityava Yahatu Payaha Na Buddhate Enam Vidanti Vedena Tasmad Vedasya Vidita the means, the solutions to the problems, which cannot be known through pratyaksha, direct perception, anumitya, by inference. Pratyakshena anumitya, anumitya va yaha tu upaya na buddhate, na buddhate is not known. What upaya? Upaya, the means, solution to our problems. Enam Vedena Vidanti. It can be known by Vedas. Tasmat Vedas Vedita. Therefore, Veda is the body of knowledge which is beyond the perception of the senses and the mind. So there comes the role of Aparavidya. The knowledge having gained with the fundamental problem of seeking happiness and avoiding sorrows ends forever in discovery, me to be limitless happiness free from sorrow. This is not the field of science. So, therefore, we don't say science not necessary, but we are talking of the field which is beyond the realm of science. See, this is what happens in our in the Vedantic pursuit of highest goal in life. First and or in discovering the reality of the world, the first and foremost thing is what? The validity of the pramana. Pramana means means of knowledge. The means of knowledge is to what extent correct and giving us the correct knowledge that needs to be verified. As far as protection, direct person is concerned, it is useful 
not only useful, it is indispensable as far as the Vyavahar, the practical world, empirical world is concerned. But it has no access to probe into that which is beyond its realm. Vedas only have to come here. In Vedas, many things are told, but Upanishad deal with this knowledge. The problem is, when we begin the inquiry, we come across such truths which are totally contradictory to our present experience. For example, we take ourselves to be subject to birth and death. We take ourselves to be subject to sorrows. We take ourselves to be, we have to work hard to have it, earn happiness. We take that entire jagat is that, including heaven and so called else. Shastra says, Chaitanya alone is there. Nothing else is there. Your Sarupa is what? Nothing but Paramananda. Is your Sarupa no trace of sorrow is there? Is not contradictory. How can you accept it? See the authenticity of the source. To begin here, Bhagavad Gita. Krishna has given it. Or Vedas has given. Who gave Vedas? Ishwar. Vedas are not written by Rishis in their intense meditation, wherein they are not aware of the world also. Ishwara revealed them certain truths. Those truths are passed on by Guru Shishya Parampara. Afterwards, Vyasa collected them together and edited them. They are called Vedas. They have come from Ishra itself. You may say, no, no, we don't believe that. We believe what meets eyes. What are perceptible only? We you may ask us, come on, prove it. We will tell you. Many things in the Vedas, told in Vedas, sorry, we can't prove. But we have few things told in the Vedas which can be verified. Truth can be seen right now here. Therefore, we infer the other things also must be correct. For example, heaven and hell, you can't verify. Law of karma, you can't verify. Punar Janma, you can't verify. Papa Punya, directly you can't verify. But there are certain rituals told in the Vedas whose results can be got right now here. For example, there is Kaririki Yaga. Kaririki Yaga is a sacrifice to bring rain. If properly done, even today you can verify the truth of it. Putra Kameshti Yaga. Sun is not there. This Yaga is Dacharata did it and got five children. Verify. Other thing. Astronomical calculations. See how Vedas were calculating the solar and lunar eclipses to the minutest fraction of a second without any present day telescopes, etc. The 
scientific gadgets. Now they said, if you don't have Shraddha in Veda, see how they calculate the eclipses, etc. If that is true, others also must be true. Much more than all this. Atma Jnana, Brahma Jnana, enunciate in the Upanishad is verifiable, sir, right now here. That is what has been done by Guru Shishya Parampara. That's why in prayers, we always keep one day Guru Parampara. Sada Shiva Samarambha Shankara Acharya Madhyama Asmad Acharya Paryanta Vande Guru Parampara. We salute the lineage of disciple and uh, Guru and the disciple because they have verified the truth of this. Atma Swarupa Brahma Swarupa, whereby the Upanishads get validated. So, what we say is based on triple cardinal test. One is Shruti Vedas. The highest means of knowledge, highest Brahman. Then the reasoning. In Upanishad itself, it is pointed out how it is given to reasoning. Third is Anubhava, Vidvad Anubhava, direct experience of the great masters. So, therefore, no doubt, we believe to begin with pending verification because we have every reason to accept it. But you who deny it have no basis except your superstitious belief. It is all wrong. You have no basis. You have got some basis. That's why Krishna appeals Shraddhavan Labhate Jnanam Samshayatma Vinashat. To begin with, your seed capital is Shraddha. And you verify it. The Ithiru Mashtar, Asanne Vasa Bhavati Asad Brahmeti Veda Chet. The person who denies the existence of Brahma, Asad, not true. He becomes useless for. In the Purushartha, forget moksha, dharmartha kama also he can. Automatically it appears, asthiti eva vedav vedavyam. You try to, you investigate, put forth effort that Atma Brahma is there. Start with that. Don't say it is not. Even at, at places, Great sages like Vashishta says, Urdva Bhavur Virayamesha Nakashya Shunochita Asankalpa Param Shreya Kimantar Nabhavet Urdva Bhavu with my arms raised Viraumi Esha. This Vashishta is shouting. Hey, please listen. Please listen. This is what good for you. What is that? And Ayo, he says, this well. Nobody is in a mood to listen to me. What is it? Asankalpa param shreya. Asankalpa means Making the mind sankalpa rahita. Sankalpa is, many meanings are there, in nutshell, manovyapara. Function the mind. Make the mind 
being alive, being verily there, not sleeping, being awake, make it non-functional. You are face to face with your real nature, Paramananda Sarupa, free from sorrow. Nakashir, you disperse. Ayo, I'm shouting at the top of my voice. That is what Krishna was the Dukkale Mashashatam. That is what Anitya Masukam. But we are busy elsewhere. You have no time to listen to all this. Even if you listen to, it doesn't appeal to us totally. Even it appeals to us, we don't put forth adequate efforts to discover it. Different levels of shraddhas are there. So therefore, because what we want to gain is beyond the realm of this terrestrial world. No means here are not directly available. So we have to get guided by Shastras. And to begin with, we should have Shraddha, belief, pending verification. That's why Shraddha Vaan Labate Dhyanam Samshayatma Vinasya. You should know that. Samastadoka Sukino Bhavantu O Shanti Shanti Shanti